All right, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Living the Dream podcast. Today on the show, we are going through Proverbs chapter 6, verses 20 through 22. Here we go. Also, the subtitle of these verses, so for the next 15 verses, I don't know how many podcast episodes that's going to be, but it's warnings against adultery. So again, this is in the context of adultery. A lot of Proverbs can be repetitive, but repetitive lessons are good. And we're going to talk a little bit about that in this show. So let's read the verses. My son, keep your father's commandment and forsake not your mother's teaching. We hear this all the time, right? In Proverbs, just about the beginning of every chapter. But bind them on your heart always. Tie them around your neck. When you walk, they will lead you. When you lie down, they will watch over you. And when you awake, they will talk with you. So the interpretation here is that father's commandments and mother's teaching will guide you if you bind them on your heart. And they will guide you by walking. When you walk, they're going to lead you. When you lie down, they're going to watch over you. So they will guide you, lead you, protect you, and talk with you, advise you, right? When you awake, they will talk with you. So the entrepreneurial application of this, when I think of father's commandments and mother's teaching, I think of really simple life lessons that are applicable in just about every situation. So when I'm thinking about entrepreneurship, I'm like, remember to apply the simple lessons to business and let them guide you. Some of these lessons are like, put people first, smile, like smiling is a great trick for customer service. Or what's another one, you know, put people first, smile. Um, Try and think of some other basic ones, like the law of reciprocity is another basic one where it's like, do unto others as you would have them do to you, because when you do that, they reciprocate, right? And so where is this shown up in my life? I always forget this one fact. People enjoy the goods and services they spend money on. I always forget that. I don't know why I forget it. It's really silly. It doesn't make sense that people would spend money on something that they don't enjoy, except for bills, because people do that all the time. But ultimately, they, they do enjoy the stuff they're using. That's why they pay the bills, but paying bills may just stress them out, but they still enjoy the goods and services, right? And so it's really interesting that I forget about that because when I'm thinking through my business models, I'm like, but would people pay money for this? That's a question a lot of entrepreneurs ask themselves. The question is, are you building a good or service that's actually servicing a need? Because people get money to spend it on stuff that they care about, whether it be a house, a car, their family, their health, creating more wealth, right? Like they're spending money on stuff that is useful to them and they enjoy spending that money. It's not like you're robbing them. It's not like you charging a high amount of money when you're providing a larger amount of value is criminal. You know, a lot of people feel bad about receiving so much money because it's out of their context of how they spend or receive money. It's just like, if people want to pay $2,000 for a used mattress because they're going to enjoy that mattress, give them the mattress and take their $2,000. Like, who are you to say what that person does or does not enjoy? And so again, it's this simple lesson of not thinking about yourself, but thinking about other people. And when you apply that simple lesson, it's like, okay, what good or service are people going to enjoy that I can collect money for so that I can sustainably provide that good or service in the best way possible? That's all business is. And so I forget that one fact that people enjoy the goods and services they spend money on because sometimes collecting money from people can be a weird thing. And it's just like, a, ooh, I don't want to take anybody's last dollar or they could put that money towards something better for them. But it's like, do you have the best good and service for them in that moment? Because if you don't, go work on your good and service. If you do, you should feel good about taking their money because you're going to help them a lot more than that $1,000 could help them, than that $3,000 could help them, than that $50 could help them, right? So for example, when somebody goes to get a haircut, everybody likes looking fresh. If you charge them $50 for that haircut, $200 for that haircut, and that haircut makes a good first impression at a job interview that then gets them $200,000 a year. Look at that. You've made them a lot more money. Like that is valuable. That was well worth that $200 spent. That's a haircut that's worth $5,000. And so if you could guarantee that your haircut's going to get somebody a $200,000 job 70% of the time, that's a haircut worth $3,000. 
every time, right? And so, because all they got to do is spend 3,000 three times and they're almost guaranteed to get that job. I don't, I'm not good at that math. I didn't just do that in my head, but I'm like 70%, 70%, 70%. You ought to get it if you do it three times. You ought to get it if you do it four times and now you're making 200K a year, right? And that's just a really crazy example of a good or service that provides a significant amount of value and you just collect less money. And so that's what business is. And I always forget that fact that like whatever good or service I'm providing, people are going to enjoy it. And that's why they spend money on it. And then all I have to do is deliver that in a way that they enjoy it. And, you know, it just compounds on itself. Um, but yeah, I just forget that. And I wanted to share that with you guys. And if you're thinking about any business idea and you're thinking about collecting money for that business idea, remember this. People like spending money on stuff that is valuable to them. And don't let the fact that somebody that you feel like somebody is being wasteful stop you from, you know, selling them a good that provides that much value to them because you don't know their life. Don't try to act like you do. You know your life. You don't have to spend money on it. Of course, you should sell something that you care about and you will spend money on. It'll help you sell it better. But you guys get my point. Where do I want this to show up in my life? I want to remember to love people. I want to remember to put people first, especially when I'm in trouble. And so it's easy. To forget basic things when you're in flight or fight mode. And so if I feel like my finances are in trouble, if I feel like my physical health is in danger or just anything I want is in danger, it's going to be hard to remember to love people and put people first because my whole body is going to be screaming to put myself first. However, again, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. That law of reciprocity will kick in and you'll start to get what you want by giving everybody else what they want. And I think Zig Ziglar said that. I can tell you how to get everything you want in life. You just got to help enough people get exactly what they want in life. It was something like that. And so I think it's a true statement. Run with it. And when you're in trouble, remember to love people and remember to put people first. How can you guys apply this to your life? Well, you can do what I just said, but you can also focus on the true things that your parents told you growing up. A lot of us, you know, may have had good parents, may have had bad parents. Your parents definitely lied to you at one point. They were definitely flawed at another point. They probably did something that was insensitive at multiple points. But there were plenty of gems sprinkled in there from the life that they lived. And remember those. Apply it to your life. And um, yeah, take those lessons and focus on the simple ones because your father's commandments and your mother's teachings, they guide you, they lead you, they watch over you, and they talk with you, right? So they advise you. Um, if you guys maybe didn't, you grew up without parents or you can't think of anything good that they ever did for you. That's the case for a lot of people, sadly. If you can't find those gems in your parents' teaching, get a source of truth. The Bible, I recommend it. Obviously, I'm reading through Proverbs and you guys have been, if you've been following my Proverbs series, <clears throat> you've been hit with multiple truth bombs, right? So Proverbs is a good one, but you know, if you don't want to be Christian, if you hate the Bible, um, you know, find another source of truth and just read it and interpret it, apply it to your life and see the results that it gets you and, you know, keep an open mind because that source of truth is important. And that thing that you kind of run everything in your world up against, we all have it. And the question is, are you intentional about building it? So that's what we got for you guys today on the show. Thank you so much for listening. We will see you on the next one. And on that note, we're out.